So it turns out that in a strange turn of events, Baby Skeptic may be arriving five weeks early. And so instead of the usual planned video, I'm going to repost a video that brought a big chunk of you here. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims and then I explain why I don't accept what they're saying. Back in November 21, Simon Dan asked me to cover a video for him as he took a break in the following January. It was one of my favourite videos I've ever made, featuring Banana Man Ray Comfort and that video was what helped me grow to the size I am today. But before we get into that, if this isn't your first Skeptic video, hit the like, the subscribe and the bell and maybe Simon Dan will have me on his channel again. <laughs> and a super thanks to all those that sends super thanks. I can't see who the recent ones are because I'm sitting in a hospital. But Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe bestows leaves upon you if you're watching right now. Okay, previous me, get to it whilst I help my meat wife get this bloody baby out of her. Hello everyone. As you know, I'm currently on a two-week break right at this moment. As per usual, when I take a break, I've lined up four content creators, uh, guest creators to fill in the slots that I normally release videos on. And today, it's someone brand new. At the back end of last year, two YouTubers defended me from two separate videos from Mr. Wacken Atheist himself, Kent Hovind. I love them both so much that I invited them both to come and cover for me. The first is from a YouTuber called The Skep Tick, and he's taking on a theist who has apparently destroyed the Big Bang. I'll let him introduce himself. Thank you very much, Dan. Like Dan mentioned, I'm the skeptic. I'm a British guy that moved to Bible Belt America, where I found that speaking about belief isn't as easy as it was in the UK. So now, to get out my sceptical thinking, I watch videos on YouTube that make extraordinary claims, like a god being real, and then explain why I can't accept their position. Ray Comfort is a man that many in the atheist community are aware of. He often twists words and tries to sound like he has all the answers, when in fact, all he does is sound a bit daft. In this video, he apparently demolishes Big Bang Theory in seconds. I'm already sceptical of this, as the original video is nearly 14 minutes long, and Ray never talks about Big Bang Theory from a scientific viewpoint. Well, not that I've seen. I wonder if he will even offer any evidence that refutes the science behind how the universe came to be. I'm ready to be proven wrong, Ray. A recent study has found that the human attention span has fallen from 12 seconds in the year 2000 to 8 seconds today. That's less than a goldfish. Well, sorry, Ray, I have to disagree. Oh, oh, a squirrel. Apparently a goldfish has an attention span of 9 seconds. So how do we keep the attention of an unsaved person in an age of impatience? That's what we're going to look at very quickly in this video. You could just save us a lot of time and demolish Big Bang Theory at the start of the video. That way we can carry on with our lives knowing that one of the true gods actually did create the universe. What do you say to someone when you ask if they believe in God and they respond by saying... I believe more in the Big Bang Theory. Big Bangs don't produce order, they produce chaos. I've never heard an explosion creating order. And you can see order in the flowers and the birds. The atom through the universe has incredible order. So that show is an intelligent designer. So that gives you hope in your death. The good old look at the trees argument. Even after an explosion, dust settles. But how do you jump from explosions don't create order, which no one is claiming that they do, to intelligent design gives you hope in death? Ray does this, and I feel like maybe most of this video won't even touch on Big Bang Theory, and will just be Ray word vomiting everywhere. What are the negatives of finding God? Well, I wouldn't say there's any negatives at all. If there is one, then hey. There should be a cash reward for finding the best hide-and-seek player ever, right? But what are the negatives in finding a briefcase with $20 trillion in it? Nothing. But that doesn't instantly make the $20 trillion briefcase exist. So far I've been speaking to Edgar's intellect. Now I'm going to swing deliberately to the conscience using the Ten Commandments. No one cares about the commandments until they've actually been demonstrated to be the word of a god, Ray. But sure, for the purpose of the video, go ahead. Watch very closely what happens. Let me show you a negative. Are you doing anything that you think could be offensive to God that could anger him. Oh, 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 my answer would be not accepting the absolute rubbish that is offered as evidence of its existence and therefore not believing it to be real. I bet that would stop Ray in his tracks. No, no. Looking at No, there's nothing inherently wrong with an adult looking at but there are many things to take into account. It can lead to unrealistic expectations in a relationship. Some partners may not appreciate it, etc. Doesn't everybody? 
<laughs> yeah, do you? Well, I'm not going to go ahead and lie, so I mean every once in a while. Yeah, having sex before marriage? Yes. These commandments are lame. Yeah. Have you lied and stolen? Lied and stolen being in the same breath is a little wrong. Lied for now, for now, yeah. Have you used God's name in vain? I think many folks use the G word in a colloquial sense, like a curse word. It doesn't make the existence of a God the truth, though. Are you going to get to the bit where you debunk Big Bang Theory anytime soon? If more for the expression, I really don't. Like, whenever I do say it, I don't mean like, like offend anybody by it. Don't worry, buddy. You can't offend something that hasn't been demonstrated to actually exist. It's like saying, for Bigfoot's sake. You're not going to offend a Bigfoot for saying it. Romans 3 verse 19 says, Now we know that whatsoever things the law says, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world become guilty before God. There are many things that the Bible says, and lots of it is ridiculous, which we could definitely get into at another time. Why should we even care what the Bible says? Using it as a cuss word, you want to express disgust. Hit your thumb and use a filth word or God's name. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Any word can be used to express emotion. This isn't demolishing Big Bang Theory, Ray. She's used to give your life. She's lavished her kindness on you. Sacrificed so much and bearing you as a child. To use her name as a cuss word is an incredible insult to her. So when you blaspheme the name of God... The Bible says it incurs the death sentence. The Old Testament, they stoned someone to death for using God's name as a cuss word, so it's very serious. Wow, sure, scare tactics. Were those people right to do that? And as for mothers versus God, one demonstrably forces you out of a reproductive system, the other is written down in a book. It's like kidney stones versus Lord of the Rings. You and I are morally accountable to God, and we stay away from the thought of God because, well, for the same reason a thief doesn't want to be near a policeman. It's not the same at all. Policemen have been demonstrated to exist. Ray then goes on a little Bible preach to Raid, which uses up some of the near 14 minutes, but at least we can skip ahead a little. So far you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. Sounds like a fun weekend, and as long as none of it is illegal in modern society, I say, fill your boots. You don't need a God to determine what is beneficial to our species. Why do people smile when they admit their sins? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because they realise that folks believe a floaty sky man told them what they should and shouldn't do, and then when you're judged by a system that has an undemonstrated figurehead, it's actually pretty funny. Just me? Okay. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Well, by that, by what you told me, guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell, if there is one. Well, there's got to be. There's got to be retribution for murderers and rapists. I mean, you know, we all know intuitively that God is good, and any judge who's good will make sure a criminal is sent to jail. And that's why we have a system in place. But by a God's reckoning, a murderer could repent and be allowed into heaven. If heaven was ever demonstrated to be real, that is. And someone who had sex before marriage and didn't repent would end up being sent to a fiery pit of doom. Isn't that a flawed system? Is sex before marriage even slightly comparable to murder? And I'm not saying that the systems we have in place for punishment are perfect, but at least you can see something happening. And there's no supposed omnipotent being governing that. You know, a good judge doesn't say, oh, look, you raped uh, this man's wife and you cut her throat, but, you know, we're old buddies. I went to school with you, so I'm going to let you go. That's not a good judge. That's corrupt. No more corrupt than someone who has owned and sold people into slavery being allowed to party for all eternity with the big G-man. Oh, yeah, I went there. Then Ray goes on another rant about Bible verses and blah, blah, blah. I'm just hoping we get to the reason we're here. Demolishing the Big Bang in seconds. Are you fearful of death? Say I'm scared of death. Yeah, well, that's good to be scared of death. It's like a man on a freeway and an 18-wheeler is heading for him at 60 miles an hour. Hang on, there's a difference between a fear of dying and a fear of death. Am I scared of death? No, because once I'm gone, I probably won't know it. But am I scared of dying? Well, I'm not sure on that either. I hope it's not painful. I hope it's not long and drawn out. And we're still not at the Big Bang Theory demolition. I'm hoping all this build-up leaves us with an epic payoff that we can't refute. Though all that seems to be happening is Ray playing with emotions. I'm making a prediction now, and I honestly haven't watched the full video as yet. This reaction is just as when you saw it. Ray is going to get to the point when this young man is so emotionally drained that he accepts there is a God, and Ray says, well, if you believe in a God, you can't believe in the Big Bang, and that will be it. I really hope I'm wrong on that. He's got a right to be scared. He should also be saying, how can I get out of the way? 
And you should be saying, man, death is inevitable. It's really terrifying. Is there a way to get out of the road of the 18-wheeler? And there is. The same God who is angry at you for your sins is rich in mercy, and he provided a way for you to be forgiven your sins and have your case dismissed and your death sentence commuted. Hold up. Being hit by a truck isn't any less painful whether you believe in an afterlife or not. And imagine that's how you did go. Would you then hypothetically live for all eternity with the memory of being destroyed by a huge truck? That's even more painful, no thanks. What I now want to do is bring a sense of urgency. I don't want him to just be awakened, I want him to be alarmed. I don't want him to awaken up from a sleep and say, oh, my house is on fire, but not be alarmed. I want him to get out of the house. Oh, right. Scare someone into belief. Oh, to be a Christian. When do you think you'll die? Probably in my 70s, 80s, hopefully. Hopefully. Everyone feels like that, but every day 150,000 people die. And a lot of them are young people. Yeah. Aneurysms, cancer, accident. When you're young, when you're 18, you tend, to, you tend to take risks with your life. A lot of people die young because they're not careful about their life. They're not, they don't see life as being precious. So you don't know when you're going to die. God does. And an all-knowing, all-powerful being could stop it from happening. So if it doesn't, does that mean that God just doesn't care about you? Or does it mean it can't stop it from happening, so it isn't all-powerful? So many questions. So there's a tremendous urgency because you could die tonight in your sleep. So you need to get before the God that gave you life and say, I knew that you existed. I denied your existence because of my guilt, and I ask you to forgive me. I've sinned against you. I've used your name as a cuss word. I've, I've loved p- you. I've loved all these things that are, that are wrong and I need you to change my heart. And murdered and forced yourself upon people. You may as well get all those out of the way before apologising to the God. And I said that for artistic licence. Please don't go around killing people. You're going to think about what we've talked about? Yeah. I mean, that was like, yeah, okay. I, I Don't worry, yeah, it's like you... You said enough stuff to make, make me think about it. You're going to think seriously about it? Yeah. You have got to be kidding me. I knew it. Ray Comfort, the man of ultimate waffle. So because the guy believed in the Big Bang Theory and Ray waffled on and made him feel bad about liking some things that a god wouldn't appreciate if it was demonstrated to be real, he's demolished Big Bang Theory? Oh, I hate to say I told you so, but, well, you know. I jumped over a lot of this as Ray started going off on random tangents about what different authors said in the Bible. If you'd like to see the full thing, you can do so in the description where you'll also find a link to my channel with content very similar to this every week. All free with one little press of the subscribe button. Did Ray demolish Big Bang Theory by convincing someone there might potentially be an omnipotent being? Well, I'm going to skip tick this off as a big fat nah. There you have it, a video that I loved. Hopefully you did too. Thank you for all the support over the last couple of years and hopefully next week I'll be a bit more normal. A big thank you to this month's top level ticks on Patreon. Godless Granny, Addy Rockart, The Enixes, Jakari, Whiskey Tech Fred and the absolute lunatic Travis as well as all the $3 base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon 2 at patreon.com slash the skeptic. The link is in the description along with links to all my other socials. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday. Hopefully. <laughs>